hi, sister. Long time no see. <laughs> what? Anissa? We haven't talked ever since you left home after you graduated high school. It's been almost five years, right? Wow, I got a text from the person I least wanted to get a text from. What? You're so mean. That's not something you should say to your adorable sister. You're not adorable. Every time something happens, you make up these weird fantasies and start smirking to yourself. You even spread a rumor once that I was dating someone I didn't even like, right? My last two years of high school were a mess because you came along. Huh? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Besides, it's a bad habit to keep talking about what happened in the past. You're right, I guess. It is in the past. <laughs> Which means that my biological sister is now someone from my past that I stopped caring about five years ago. What? Bye. Hey, hold on. You see, I texted you to tell you about my wedding. You might cry when you see the name of my fiancé and the invitation I sent you, though. You, s you still have to come, though, because you're my sister after all. Hi, Ala. I didn't get your reply to my wedding invitation yet. What? Oh, you said something about you getting married, right? I didn't get an invitation. Huh? Maybe you got the address wrong? What? Your new address in N-City was left to us by you as a note, and I'm pretty sure that's where I sent it. I don't live in N-City anymore. I moved three times over these past five years because of new jobs or relocation and stuff. Which means I no longer live in N-City, which my company assigned me to at the beginning. I don't think the Postal Service is going to be able to deal with it, so the invitation you sent me will probably be returned. Hmm. Oh, I get it. I see through your lies, Ala. Huh? I see. I don't blame you. You don't want to come anymore because you found out who my fiancé was, right? I told you I didn't get an invitation. But you need to come to the wedding. You know his family is a very high-class family, right? I can't let him think that the sister of his wife, who's going to be a part of his family soon, is a vagabond who ran away from home five years ago, and is also so heartless and inconsiderate as to not come to her adorable sister's wedding. His mother's really strict, so I need to make a good impression. So, you must come. Even if you tell me all that, I don't even know who the groom is. It's written on the invitation, right? <laughs> Stop lying. I know you had a good look at it. <laughs> but I didn't even get an invitation. Lies. This conversation won't go anywhere if you keep saying I lied. I see. So you're gonna pretend you didn't get it no matter what, huh? I'm not pretending, though. We can't seem to agree, so you don't need to reply to my invitation anymore. You're going to come to my wedding. You have to. Then at least tell me the date and place. No matter what you say, it won't change the fact that it really didn't come. I don't know who the groom is, when the wedding will be, or where it's going to take place, so I won't be able to come even if I wanted to. I'm telling you that it's written on the invitation. It's no use lying to me that you didn't get it. Read the invitation. Make sure to come to the wedding ceremony, and make sure to congratulate me and my fiancé with a smile on your face. But I didn't get it. You're getting annoying now. It's pathetic how you're trying to go through this lie. <laughs> Bye! Looks like you haven't changed in these five years. Hi, sister. You're at the venue already, right? By venue, do you mean wedding venue? Of course. <laughs> I did arrive at the venue, but it's none of your business. What are you talking about? Of course it's my business. It's my wedding. <laughs> um, don't tell me you're going to tell me to do things on my wedding, are you? What do you mean, tell you to do things? You're here to ruin my wedding, right? What? It's so hilarious how you came to my wedding to take back your ex-boyfriend from me. <laughs> what? My ex-boyfriend? But I'm not gonna let you have him. What in the world are you talking about? You're at the wedding venue in End City, right? That's what I wrote in the invitation after all. <laughs> what are you talking about? How many times do I have to tell you I never got an invitation? And how many times do I have to tell you it's no use lying to me like that? <laughs> hey, Anissa, could it be the case that today's your wedding? Of course it is. You're at the wedding venue already, right? What are you trying to do asking me whether it's my wedding? <laughs> but I have a surprise for you. That's not actually the wedding venue. Um... You don't get it yet. The wedding invitation I sent you was a special one made for you specifically. I wrote a completely different wedding venue on just your invitation. 
It's an actual place, so there's a low risk that you find out. I mean, you actually did go, right? <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> Too bad you didn't get to steal your ex-boyfriend back. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you while you seem to be having so much fun, but I just met with a groom earlier. What? We're going to a bridal fair that's being hosted at a wedding venue in the capital. What? The capital? I wrote End City on your invitation. I couldn't see it since it never came. The reason I came to the wedding venue is because I'm supposed to meet my boyfriend, who I'm going to marry here for the bridal fair. What? What do you mean, a bridal fair? What are you talking about? But me and the groom are already at the wedding venue. Oh my god, you still don't understand? Understand what? Your groom and my groom are two different people. What? I've told you this over and over, but I've never received your invitation, which means I don't know who your groom is or where the wedding venue is. I don't even know today was your wedding until now. What are you talking about? I couldn't ask mom and dad either since they have me blocked on their phones. What? They blocked you? Both mom and dad loved you more than me, right? I hated that house, so I left as soon as I graduated high school. After a while without texting them, I noticed that they had blocked me. What? I thought that you left home and moved to a different town because you were in shock that I stole your boyfriend. Huh? But I didn't even have a boyfriend in high school. What? That's a lie. You were going out with Peter, right? What? Peter? I knew that you and Peter were a couple, so Peter comes from a very wealthy family, and I thought it was so unfair that he was your boyfriend, which is why I stole him. Oh, Peter was the guy from the other class you thought was my boyfriend, right? The one you told everyone was my boyfriend? What? I thought he was your boyfriend? I only saw him at the student council meetings, though. Yes, but you were always sitting next to him at those meetings, right? Whenever I took a peek at the room the meetings were being held, he would always be sitting next to you. I don't know why you would watch those meetings, but I'll put that aside for now. We were supposed to sit in order of class at those meetings, so he would always sit next to me since he was from the class next door. Huh? So that's why? Those were the only times I would meet him during high school. Then, who in the world is your fiancé? I guess I should tell you his name. My fiancé is Fyodor. Uh, the vocal for the school's rock band? Yes, that guy. He works from home, so he didn't hesitate coming with me every time I moved. It's been decided that I'll be working at the company headquarters from now on, so we're going to get married because it seems that I'm finally going to be able to stay in one place. No way. That's completely different, too. Alla, cut my wedding right now. What? I told you before, right? Peter's family is a very high-class family. I can't be thought of as having a heartless and inconsiderate sister that won't come to my wedding. But didn't you write a fake venue on just my wedding invitation? I would have told him that I came up with a plan to make sure he didn't come to my wedding, since he would try and steal my groom who was also your ex-husband. I thought that they would approve of this. Um, I don't think so. And I'm not even his ex-girlfriend either. But I thought that you were. Um, sorry, but the bridal fair is about to start. Uh. It seems I was never actually invited in the first place. And it's strange how you've been texting me for so long, even though you're the bride of the wedding and should be really busy. Something must be happening over there. I don't want to get involved in whatever it is, and I don't intend on going ever going back home either since I already cut ties with you three. Ala? Well, that's it. Bye. Hold on. This is going to be a problem for me. Hmm. Please come here, Alla. My dad isn't going to get paid at this rate. I already bought a lot of things thinking Peter would share his money with me. Mom and Dad, too. They bought new bags and went on an overseas vacation and stuff. If I don't get married now, it's going to be a big problem. So please come. All you have to do is pretend like we get along. <laughs> It seems Anissa's wedding was cancelled after all. Peter's family knew why I was distant with my family, and they were going to decide what they would do with Anissa by seeing how they treated me once I came to the wedding. But on the day of the wedding, they found out that Anissa had sent me a wedding invitation with the wrong address. Not only that, but even after being told that I never got an invitation, she insisted that I was lying and didn't do anything about it. After seeing how cruel my sister was to me, they decided that the marriage between Peter and Anissa was going to be cancelled. Thanks to Peter's family's kindness, Anissa and her parents were exempted from having to pay for the wedding ceremony. But it seems that both Anissa and her parents had been counting on Peter's money, and splurged on a variety of expensive things. The three of them, now in huge debt, were taken away by some shady business, and no one has heard of them since.
Hello, Mark. There's a few things I want to discuss with you. What an unexpected surprise. Please go ahead. And also, thank you for having me over the other day. First of all, I want to make this clear. I am not your father. What do you mean? Don't act all warm and friendly and call me father. I don't remember having a son who dropped out of high school. But the last time we met, I hid my feelings because my wife and Cynthia were present. I didn't want to create a scene, so I didn't say anything. I see. But you're still in favor of our wedding, right? Stop it! You're getting ahead of yourself. I heard you and Cynthia were classmates in high school before you dropped out. Yes, that's right. What did you do after you dropped out? You know Cynthia went to university after high school. Well, it's a little difficult to explain. I heard you stayed home all day. Well, that's one way of looking at it. So you're a loser. No, that's not me. Well, then, what were you doing? I used the time to learn the ins and outs of computers and the internet. So, what you're saying is you became a nerd. I guess I can't help if that's what you think of me, but there are many types of nerds. All I know is when people your age were busy studying, looking for work, you took advantage of your parents' generosity and an unproductive life. Unproductive life? It wasn't a big deal. And I was able to use that experience to benefit my present job. A company that hires loser nerds? There aren't any charitable goody-two-shoes companies like that, especially in the U.S. Father, is it safe for me to say you don't like me? I don't mean to be rude, but you're just paltering and I don't understand where this conversation is heading. Don't make me repeat myself, don't call me father. This is why I cannot have a conversation with people who've dropped out of high school. They make me repeat the same things over and over again. You remind me of the high school dropouts at my company. Mr. Williams, I think you have a prejudice against high school dropouts. How dare you presume anything about me? You haven't even graduated from high school. Nowadays, educational accreditation isn't as important as it used to be. Only someone with no education would say that. I see. Can we agree you don't want me to marry Cynthia? I don't even like you saying my darling daughter's name. You high school dropout loser. Um, the education bit... The loser bit. It's gone beyond a simple misunderstanding. Can you base your opinion of me on my current job and my salary? Your salary? There's no way a high school dropout salary is worth bragging about. Is that so? I don't mind showing you my pay stubs if it eases your mind. Your pay stubs? They can be forged. I think you've gone too far. I'm not someone who would do something like that. Anyhow, I wouldn't believe anything from a goody two-shoes company that hires loser nerds. No matter how hard you try, there is no way I will allow you to marry my daughter. How can you say such hurtful things about a company you don't know? I can easily find out things about your company by asking some of the other employees. But I'm sure it's a place that attracts high school dropout losers. You're incorrect. My company is a well-known company on the New York Stock Exchange. You cannot begin to understand what a great company it is. The charitable company offering handouts? Look, I don't know how to explain myself, so you'll believe me. Even if you worked for a Fortune 500 company with a six-figure salary, I would still say no to this marriage. Why? Marriage equals children, right? The child will have your DNA. That's right, what's the problem? You're going to give me a grandchild who has genes of a high school dropout. There's no point in continuing this conversation. I realize now that we will never understand each other. Good boy. You finally understand my reservations. Promise me you'll quickly break up with my daughter and never go near her again. I can't promise you that. But Cynthia and I will have a long, serious discussion. 
Though you are a high school dropout, you do know how fragile people's feelings are. And the relationship to avoid causing Cynthia any further pain. Hey, what's going on? Cynthia hasn't been home in days! Why don't you ask Cynthia yourself? I have. She's ignoring all my calls and messages. I know you are behind this. Yes, but even if I were to explain it to you, you know you wouldn't believe me. You animal! You tricked my daughter into leaving home! I didn't trick her. I just told her the truth. I know what you're thinking. You want Cynthia because her college education has landed her a high-paying job. You want her money! Do you know what you're saying? Remember how I'd convinced you to break up with her? But then you remembered her salary, and you coaxed her back. I never said I would break up with her, not even once. I told you to break up with Cynthia to avoid causing her any further pain. To which I replied we would have a long, serious discussion, not a breakup conversation. Don't act so high and mighty, you high school dropout! You are so obnoxious! Cynthia felt sick when she found out about what a bigot you are. I never told Cynthia anything. She didn't hear it from me. But when you contacted me, Cynthia happened to be with me, and she was looking at the messages while sitting next to me. I can't believe you're the type of person who shows others private WhatsApp chats. Normally I wouldn't show my chats to anyone, but you are Cynthia's father. Don't you have any honor towards your fellow man? Wait a second. I never expected the chat to be such a smear campaign. Sorry, Mr. Williams, but this is all on you. Smear campaign? What are you talking about? This is why I hate your generation. I only spoke the truth. Whether it be the truth or not, Cynthia started crying in the middle of her chat. You made her cry? No. I'm not the one at fault. I don't feel comfortable getting married while you and I are crossing swords. So I've tried to convince her to go home. Then Cynthia's coming home? No, she's obstinate about not returning. But her clothes, her things! Don't worry, we've bought her new things. How dare you waste Cynthia's hard-earned money? You're not only a loser and nerd, but a freeloader as well. You scoundrel! Mr. Williams, have you been paying attention? We bought Cynthia's things, not mine. It's your fault she ran away from home. It's your responsibility as a man to pay for her things. Okay, that makes sense. I'm sure you won't be able to support her for long on your high school dropout salary. That's why you're making Cynthia pay for her things herself. I'm embarrassed for you. I wonder who's embarrassed of whom. I couldn't care less anymore what you think of me. You are aware Cynthia has led a life without any financial burdens, thanks to me. I'm sure she'll quickly realize how difficult life with you is. Anyways, tell Cynthia to come home soon. Do we understand each other? Why don't you wait patiently for her to return? She is an adult, after all. You really irk me. I'm sure she'll use up all her savings living with you, a high school dropout. Just because I went a little overboard with my objections. I know it'll end soon. So, I've decided I'll wait it out. Thank you for your understanding. Have a nice day. I can't believe the nerve of you. Long time no speak. What is this long time no speak nonsense? That's enough. Have Cynthia come home now. Unfortunately, due to her health, it's unsafe for her to fly. What? Her health? Fly? What are you talking about? I beg your pardon, I thought Mother had informed you. She hasn't told me anything. What do you mean, fly? Have you been transferred to some remote, terribly inconvenient location? I'm sure it's because you made a mistake or something. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. We're currently living in Zurich, Switzerland. 
on top of which Cynthia is pregnant. Pregnant? You rascal, what have you done? How dare you? I'm constantly in touch with Mother about our lives here. Mother understands what's going on. You're so lucky to have such a terrific wife. Who do you think you are? I haven't heard anything. Really? But that's between you and your wife. I don't want to get in the middle. What are you two doing in Switzerland? Have Cynthia come back to the States at once! That's impossible. I'm here for work. It is one of the safest countries in the world. It may be safe in the city. I'm sure if you go to the outskirts, there are hoodlums and gang members. If you're so worried, why don't you come here and check it out for yourself? <laughs> why do I have to go abroad? You guys get back here now. But Mother has visited a couple of times. What? She has? Yes, when Cynthia first discovered her pregnancy, Mother flew out to help us out. How did she get the money? Does she hide money from me? Don't worry, I paid for her airfare, etc. Ha! <laughs> what a ridiculous lie! You are such an impossible person. Isn't it about time you heard what I do for a living? I'm not interested in hearing what a high school dropout does for a living. But for you to assume I have a terrible job based on my education... I have my pride, you know. It's not an assumption, it's the truth. I give up. I'm a trader for an investment bank. I won't name the company as I don't want to give you a heart attack. <laughs> How stupid do you think I am? I dropped out of high school and stayed home so I could study on my own. That's what all the losers say. No way. In the beginning I wasn't making a lot of money. But I gradually began to understand global markets, so I moved abroad. Hmm, that sounds fishy. You can think whatever you want, but the truth is I moved here when I was younger so I could learn more about the European market. What? Switzerland! I began as an assistant in my current company here. <laughs> what nonsense, I'm sure it's all lies! If you're this suspicious, there's no way you'll ever believe me. The schools are different in Europe, and the fact I didn't finish high school really didn't make a difference. What's the name of the company? It's Silverman Sachs. <laughs> you must be joking. Even an old man like me can see right through it. You still won't believe me. Talk is cheap. I'll use my many connections to find out the truth about you. You will? Thank you. And if you still can't accept me, I will give up as well. Shut up! Give me back my daughter ASAP! That's another complicated discussion, so I'll get back to you. Have a nice day. Mark, I have something important I need to ask you. Mr. Williams, what can I do for you? Nope. You may call me father. I believe you, now that I know what your job is. Oh, I'm happy you finally believe me. I know we had some misunderstandings in the past, but I will admit you are a suitable partner for my daughter. Misunderstandings? I can't believe how you've belittled our issues. Can you stop with the attitude? And like I said, there's something I wanted to ask you. What is it? My wife hasn't been home for the past few days. Is it possible she's with you and Cynthia? Yes, she's here with us. She told us you two got divorced. Divorced? <laughs> Nothing's been decided yet. I'm against it. But no matter what you think, Mr. Williams, it will be decided in a court of law. Court of law? What are you talking about? You were quite belligerent about my education, but it was shocking to find out you've always been belligerent towards your family. What do you mean, belligerent? You've been mean to Mother, right? What does that have to do with getting a divorce? I married her right after she graduated from junior college, so she could be a housewife, a stay-at-home mother. What's wrong with that? 
There's nothing wrong with being belligerent every now and then. No, there is a problem with being belligerent. The fact that you don't see that as a problem, it doesn't speak well of you. Hold on. Does this mean both my wife and daughter will be living with you from now on? Yeah, I think so. Cynthia will be with me until death do us part. If you want, Mr. Williams, you're more than welcome to come as well. <laughs> me! How dare you! But what about our misunderstandings? If you're willing to fly out here, I'll make time so we can sort everything out. That's not going to happen. You know I'm a proud man. Too bad. Can you do me a favor and just come back to the States? That's impossible. Plus, we have Cynthia's due date coming up soon. It isn't wise for us to travel anywhere at the moment. Ah, don't say that. Be a pal. I want to see my grandchild as well. I want to spend time with everyone here in the States. In that case, why don't you have enough love for your wife and daughter to get on an airplane and come here? Is it because you're such a proud man? It's not that. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? I'm scared to leave the U.S. People don't speak English. You never know what'll happen. Mr. Williams, you graduated from university. How can you be scared of leaving the U.S.? I went to Switzerland when I was 18. Me, the high school dropout. What does education have to do with that? Is that so? But don't you use a person's education to judge them? I figured, because you're a university graduate, you know so much more than me, including how to overcome fear. They don't teach you that in university! So let's compromise. Why don't we meet in the middle? What do you mean, in the middle? There's a direct flight from Zurich to New York, right? There's a direct flight from here to JFK as well. So, why don't we meet in New York? The middle, it's still in the US. Anyways, for us, it's impossible. Oh, come on. Even this is me getting out of my comfort zone. I will apologize to my wife and daughter, and of course to you. No, thank you. And I just heard from Cynthia and Mother. Even if you came to Zurich, they told me to tell you they never want to see your face again. They don't even want to talk to you, so please communicate with them through your lawyer. Wait! You realize it's me who's offering to get out of my comfort zone. You only need to make a single flight. The birth of our child takes precedence. Nothing will change that. I also want to protect Mother. Mr. Williams, please enjoy your life. Though, there's no one left for you to be belligerent towards. Wait a second, you know you're committing a crime. That's rich, me committing a crime. Then let's start with your trial. There's no way I will ever be convicted. Mr. Williams stuck to his belief that he's afraid to leave the state and didn't come to visit us. And I continued my career moving from one financial hub to the next. I never saw Mr. Williams again. Mr. Williams would not agree to a divorce and made such a fuss that Mother ended up agreeing to forgo any alimony in exchange for the divorce. It took three years, but the divorce was finalized. In the end, Mr. Williams lost his family. Both Cynthia and Mother were filled with contempt towards him. Even at work, his antagonistic attitude did him no favors. Everyone was sick of him. You know the man on the subway who's all alone and looks out the window grumbling to himself? That's what Mr. Williams is now. <laughs>